Okay, we're going from under the water to up in the trees. Please welcome A Paradise Lost from artist and media maker Lori Sumier. Thank you very much. Can I get a quick um, show of hands of who has seen an endangered species in the wild? Oh, okay, that's a, more than I was expecting. I'm happy to hear that. Did you know that Hawaii is the endangered species and extinction capital of the world? Oh. I grew up on Oahu and I never heard about this until I moved to New York City and I was shocked to discover that we have already lost hundreds of plants and animals found nowhere else in the world in about a span of 150 years, which is pretty short. Aloha, my name is Laurie Sumier. I am an artist, animator, and filmmaker. A Paradise Lost is about the palilo, one of several endangered birds that is struggling to survive. Once upon an island. I will tell you the tale of how I saved my kind from extinction. Many of us lived, Kama'aina, children of the land, on the top of Mount Kea, far from the reaches of man. But when the forest disappeared, we lost our homes. I sued to save my keiki, my family, my friends, to reclaim our forest from uninvited guests, hitchhikers, interlopers from the winds of weather, beast, and fire. Once upon an island, I will tell you the tale of how a paradise lost was finally found. So Palila was the first animal to sue to save itself from extinction in 1979 with the case Palila v. Hawaii. We tell this unusual story from the bird's point of view, from the taxidermied specimen that sat at the plaintiff's table in the courtroom that was a representative of the species. So this specimen was physically in the courtroom for the entire case. BBM251 is the main character of our film. He's a stuffed, animated, and live bird. At 150 years old, he's a cross between a war veteran, a war veteran grandpa, Dalai Lama, and Yoda. He's a brave, wise, funny Zen master, and our dream voice actor would be native Hawaiian actor Keanu Reeves. Found only on Mauna Kea, Palila has clung to survival, completely dependent on mamani trees for food, shelter, and nesting. Palila v. Hawaii became a landmark case that established that harming habitat was as bad as killing an endangered species and has since sued six times. Flash forward 40 years later, the lawsuit prevented Palila's imminent extinction, but today there are only 1,000 birds left the case is still going, and threats to Palila still remain. A Paradise Loss is supported by Pacific Islanders in Communications, Firelight Media, and Union Docs. We are currently in production, and that means we still need to fundraise to finish the film. So a third of the film will be animated, and we still need to shoot live action scenes on Mauna Kea where they are releasing captive Palila to newly restored habitat. This is an important, urgent story. Birds are humanity's connection to nature, and birds live everywhere, from urban parks in New York City to remote ice flows in the Antarctic. And we are now living in the sixth extinction. Palila are one of thousands of species that are on the brink of vanishing forever. So this hopeful story is set in one of the most beautiful places on Earth, on Mauna Kea on the Big Island. We need your help to bring this animated story to life. We need educational partners to help get kids to see this film and also to get it into schools. We have secured a partnership with the Bishop Museum who will be a strategic partner in science and culture curriculum. 
Uh, we are also in need of PR and social media mavens to help us with messaging and online presence. We are currently running a Name the Palila contest because BB251 is a little not so personal. So we had kids um, come up with names and now we are currently trying to get pu the public to vote on one of these names to rename this bird. And he will be known in forevermore as this name. And finally, we have a need for musicians to contribute music to our film and to participate in a fundraising concert. Since Palila is a, a songbird, uh, music will be really key to connect with audiences. So through A Paradise Lost, Palila represents what is rare and unique about Hawaii and cannot be found anywhere else. If this little bird dies, we lose one small part of what makes Hawaii special. So I leave you with the voice of a Palila. Mahalo. And um, just uh, before you leave, please make sure you grab one of my 2019 calendars. Um, I am an artist and I do uh, calendars of endangered species, so I brought one for everyone in the audience. And they're really beautiful. And they're super beautiful. And can you buy them? Where can I buy one? Um, I mean, I'm getting on one on my website. Free, but where could I buy one? On my website. So this um, 2020's calendar is going to be birds. Um, I totally love August because it's dragonflies, and I love dragonflies. Um, and that last artwork you showed, the, the one of the Palila, the blue and yellow, the last slide, is that going to be in the next calendar? Yes, it's on it the cover. super beautiful, so thank you. I can't wait. Okay, so, um, folks, we need to get this um, project finished. We need to, it's a really interesting project, isn't it? It's on so many different levels um, in terms of your creation as an artist. Um, and that's, um, I think, powerful and challenging for you as an artist to actually make it real, to realize it. So, yes, this yeah. is a very unusual kind of documentary where you have a talking bird that is really, like a real bird that existed and, you know. Exactly. And it has a history, so, yeah. Yeah. So, um, here we have people. That one and then Eliana. Oh. Uh, aloha again, I'm Denise Santolini from the law school. Uh, this story is such an iconic story in the environmental law field. It is probably the most famous endangered species story. So I would love, it's not on your list, but once again, if you need assistance in terms of the legal side of it, it would be of great interest to the law school and the environmental law program. A couple other things, I'm sure you're already connected with wonderful organizations like Conservation Council for Hawaii. Yes, and they are our community outreach partner. Fantastic, and um, you can agreed do to better. Do, they've agreed to do um, screenings on all the islands and also um, we're looking to do West Coast screenings. Fantastic, and two more things I wanna offer. Um, the attorney who was on this case, Mike Sherwood, Sierra Club Legal Defense Fund, who put the bird in the courtroom, happy to connect you to him. He's, he, he's in the documentary. Fantastic, great, You've, you're just racking it up here. <laughs> and then um, Judge King, who presided over the case, you're gonna, you're gonna up me on this. Oh, we're trying to get in touch with his son. Yeah, so yeah, the law him. school has his archives, and so there would be some interesting materials in there you, you might want to shoot and pick I, up. And I checked it out and fantastic. it. Yes. You're way ahead. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. So right in front of you, actually. Actually, Holly, right up here. I'm just going to volunteer also. This is what happens when you get old. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, uh, George Kahumoku, he's extraordinary. He's a slack um, key artist. So I'm volunteering him as well. So, <laughs> so this, um, it's a wonderful piece. And this was also for the symphony, right? I mean, didn't you guys do yes, something? Yes, I also did a, a piece for the Honolulu, or the Symphony of Hawaiian Birds. I, yeah. I worked on that project. Yeah. Yes. And it's just, it's a natural for, and, and there's an artist, Abby Romanchek, who's done beautiful art and activism on Maui that I'd love to connect you to because she's done um, activist art as well, connected to birds, so I'd love you to meet her too. Right, thank yeah. you. Hi, Lori. Hi. You've done such great work on this so far. I'd like to connect you with the Office of Hawaiian Education and help out with possibly the curriculum and, and getting it into, uh, yeah, and getting it into the schools. And I also know a musician that works with, um, with DOE and can be a great 
a resource for some of the music that could possibly be in the, the final product. Thank you very much. In the, in the back over here, or Chloe. This, I, I'm trying to be helpful. So this is kind of a weird film, but it reminds me of another weird film <laughs> that was actually filmed at the Bishop called Archives of Extinction. Do you know mm -hmm. it? By yes, Elise? I know, and I know the filmmaker, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my thesis film with her. We should share oh, stories. Yeah. Um, Elise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but she's doing really great educational distribution through DER. Mm -hmm. so it might be worth, I don't know if this, I'm sure Firelight can also like give you all these resources. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also gonna call out Robin, because New Day, like is really great at educational distribution and that was one of your things, so yeah. Here, I'll come. Um, right here. Holly, give that mic to Robin. Robin okay, um, New Day Films, again, is a distribution co-op run by filmmakers, owned by filmmakers to get films into educational um, distribution, which means nonprofit, community, K to 12 schools and universities and it's a way for filmmakers to monetize their films, to control the distribution, and to have a great network of other filmmakers. And New Day is actively seeking um, diverse content and diverse filmmakers. And um, of course, <laughs> since I know Lori, I've <laughs> already targeted Lori's film for New Day, and I was like, you know, but it, Lori's film needs to get finished first, so that always is funding. But definitely this is a a shoe-in for educational distribution. And any other uh, uh, filmmakers who are interested in New Day, please come to speak to me because it is a great organization. Okay, we're going to the back first. Yeah, back to the front. Ah, okay. I, I just want to preface this by saying I have nothing to offer you. I'm sorry, except... I have everything. <laughs> except fascination. Um, I have nothing to do with this world. I just, except I can send you my mahalo. I actually have... Can I ask questions? Yes. A question? So... I just have to tell you why this is so fascinating to me. Um, my nephew asked me to help name his new daughter to be and give it a Hawaiian name. His wife, his only request that it, is that the name had something to do with music. My, and then I wanted to honor my mother who's from Kohala. So when I did research, I came up with the Palila bird. And of course, Queen Emma wrote a chant mm -hmm. about this bird. Mm -hmm. And so Kaleo Nahe O Palila, is one of the lines from her chant from the 1860s. And that's the name I gave my niece. Until last week's Thursday, it came out to be a boy, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I just wanna say that, I, first of all, I was like, you gotta be kidding me, that's the Palila, I named it. But um, I just wanna know, um, so I actually see a female voice, but anyway, that's just mm -hmm. me. A female, like real, like Hawaiian, not Keanu. Mm -hmm. But anyway, not that I don't love Keanu because he's hot, but my question to you, <laughs> my question to you is what aspect of that native Hawaiian, because it's a native Hawaiian indigenous bird, indigenous yeah. only to that part yes. of Hawaii Island, which is steeped in culture. Yes. Um, what part, what Hawaiiana is in the film or part of that, that educational component, so, like Queen Emma talking to the bird or something? So we have the bird kind of being like the narrator, and then when we talk about what's happening today on the Mauna, um, I have a native Hawaiian character who is in charge of Palila, um, the project, and he is in charge of the release project, and he just happens to be native Hawaiian who's from Waimea, and his family is like 14 generations Hawaiian from the Mauna, so... Um, and his brother is a hunter who was anti-Palila before, so there were some interesting conversations and conflict just within his family. So, you know, we get some of the human story through him uh, and talking about what they're trying to do to save the bird right now and um, some of the issues that they're having. And um, it's a lot of human beings not getting along. And so the bird's kind of like, I don't understand what's the deal with Hawaii. You know, the Hawaiians and the... Japanese and all these different communities that can't get, they can't agree on this, sub, this issue. So, you know, um, he's kind of like a ch child in a divorce and just doesn't understand why the, the adults aren't getting along. So we are gonna get into that with some of the human characters of what's happening today on the Mauna. Wow, okay, right here. Hi, Lori. Uh, hey, I'm Shirley. Shirley Thompson. I'm a, a documentary editor and producer, and I just really want to um, speak from the heart about this project and how um, excellent it is and um, what an outstanding job that Lori has done of putting together a, a stellar team of filmmakers. There's beautiful, beautiful cinematography by Ann Misawa in the film. And um, 
it, she, her characters are, are really super strong, not just the animated Palila, but her human characters that, as well, great casting. So um, I know that this film, um, that we're not supposed to somehow ask for money here, but I'm gonna do it. Um, <laughs> Because uh, Lori has done a really good job of raising some grant money and she needs matching funds and the matching funds need to be local. They need to be from Hawaii. So um, we really need the community to step up and um, offer some matching funds so Lori can finish her film. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. In the back over there. Shannon. Oh, hi. It's Hi. me again. Um, so I help write um, Doc Society's newsletter, which you should all subscribe to, but we've got about, oh, like 35,000 subscriptions on there, and I want to make the naming contest part of it for November, so we should talk, and it'll go out to, like, so many countries and so many people, so get the word awesome. out. Yeah, I think the contest is to, through November, so, yeah. Beautiful. Okay, any more for any more? Um, yes, Chris Hastings. So you have local grants and you have some other grants. Have you taken it outside the US? I have not tried that, no. All right, so then what I can help you do mm -hmm. is maybe put together a package for hot dogs or someplace else to try to get international broadcasters on. And sometimes it's small money mm -hmm. from each country, but yeah. it might help you fill your gap and it might expand your distribution. So I'll, I'll add my time to that. Wow. Um, we've already talked a little bit at Firelight, yep. but we should talk mm. a little bit more. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank All you. Right. Wait, we have one more. Billy. Right over here. Uh, two, Wes. Yeah, um, NetPAC, a network for the promotion of Asia Pacific cinema. Uh, my wife and I would like to offer to host um, at uh, our movie theater um, you know, an opportunity for you to show your film and work with you to identify possible funders in the community, people who are very interested in saving this bird, and to have a reception, food and drinks, opportunity to see this, and hopefully they will take out their checkbooks and give you some money. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Billy and Jeanette. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lori. Thank you so much. Um, your work is beautiful. Um, each you. and every one of your, your filmmakers and organizations that presented your work is beautiful. And just let's give Lori a round of applause. Thank you. One more thing. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been part of this event, who has supported us, you know, Participants, this has been an amazing experience, and um, I feel like I can speak on behalf of everyone that we bonded and we had such an amazing time. So, thank you to everyone. I don't know everyone's names, but thank you, thank you, thank you. This was such a cool experience. Thank you. Thank you.